Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems. Today we're going to be talking about foot pressure in the squat and the way that your knees need to move to lift the most weight possible. Uh, you know, some common misconceptions about this and the reason I think it's important to make this video is there's been so much cueing, so many articles, videos written, which, you know, are more geared towards geared powerlifting, really talking about sitting back, putting the weight on the heels, maybe being able to wiggle your toes during the squat. But if you don't have a squat suit on, which probably the overwhelming majority of you do not, it's going to be really important that you utilize your quads to their fullest capability in the squat. And to do that, you're going to need to let the knee travel forward. It's perfectly safe, assuming you have the ankle movement to allow for that. And we've got some great videos from Dr. Quinn Hennock covering that topic more in depth. But as long as you have the ankle movement to allow for your entire foot to stay flat on the ground, so your heels aren't coming off the ground, it's gonna be perfectly safe for your knee and it's also gonna put your legs in the best position to use your quads to the maximum, to their maximum capability below parallel and a few inches above parallel on the way out of the hole where the quads are best suited to work and the hamstrings aren't in a great position to apply force to the bar. So today we're gonna, Max and I are gonna show you along with Kristen Dunsmore, one of our athletes here at Juggernaut HQ, how it looks when you do it wrong and how it looks when you do it right and how you can do it better. So first up, I want to show you the wrong way to do it. So Chris, go ahead and get under the bar here. And then really set up like exaggerated on the heels yeah, way back with a lot heel. of hip back action. Stick your butt back first. So you can see Chris is really back on her heels. Her toes are, there's actually no pressure in the toe. Go ahead again. She's keeping a pretty vertical shin position. And obviously with no weight on the bar, it's not gonna be quite as drastic as it is in some of these other videos we're gonna show you. So with the pressure back on the heel here, go ahead and squat down again. The knee staying back, back, back. It's very hard for the quads to get involved in this lowest position in the squat where they're best suited to work. What that's often gonna to lead to is one, maybe it's hard to hit depth, because you're adding length to the hamstring right off the bat by sitting back and keeping the weight on your heels. So it may cause some balance issues, some stability issues in the hole. And then, as we mentioned, in this lowest joint angle below parallel, the hamstring is not well suited to extend the knee. The quads can do a really good job of that. But if I'm way back here, now my quads can't get involved nearly as much and my hamstrings can't really do the job. So a lot of times that's when you'll see people who are squatting where their hips rise early. Um, they're, not, they're not able to utilize their quads. Maybe they do more of a good morning style squat. So in order to do it right, in order to actually use your quadriceps and set yourself up so that at the bottom of the squat you have the best use of your quadriceps, we want to start the squat by descending with our weight in the middle of our foot. So if Kristen takes a bar out again. <clears throat> Instead of setting up with her body weight far, far back on her heels, she's gonna bring her body weight forward so it sits basically directly in front of the shin, not much further than that. She's gonna apply downward pressure through her toe, through her big toe into the floor, into the floor and equal pressure into her heel. So the, the pressure of the bar and her body is sitting right in the middle of her foot, right in front of her shin. From here, she's gonna break at the knee and squat down. As she gets to the bottom, so come down again, She's gonna come down. She's gonna try and keep her knee over her toe as long as she can coming out of the hole. So she's gonna push through this mo the motion so that her quadriceps are doing the primary action here, are doing most of the work out of the bottom. This is where they're best suited to work in the squat. Right out of the hole and a few inches above parallel. So the most common problem that we're gonna see here is as Chris squats down, even if someone's doing a good job of keeping their knee forward in the hole and has the foot pressure in the right spot, as soon as she comes out of the hole, it would be the knee shifting back and the hips rising up early. Just go like the first two inches for me. So as the knees shift back and the hips rise early, she gets into a bit more of this good morning position. And this is still a joint angle where the quads are gonna be able to really be the primary mover of the lift. But now with the knee shifted back, the weight's shifting more to the hamstrings, but the hamstrings aren't suited to work as well in that position. You can see in this other example video how this happens to me and it happens to Max as both more quad dominant, relatively strong leg, weak back squatters. As we hit the hole, our knee shifts back, our hips rise early, and the lift comes to a very sudden stop. 
And you can learn more about this in our video about assessing leg versus back strength to know if you're a strong leg, weak back, or strong back, weak leg squatter. But this is gonna be the very common problem is the, the loss of proper foot pressure and knee position. So as you come out of the hole, it's about trying to keep the knee in its most forward position for as long as possible. Naturally, the knee's gonna have to shift back as you get higher up in the squat and get towards lockout, but it's the early shift backwards that we're trying to avoid. So again, this concept is really critical, especially when training for weightlifting or training the squat for weightlifting. We want to ensure that the, the lifter's torso remains as vertical as possible. This can only happen if they're using their quadriceps to the fullest ability they have. So when she squats down, the high bar squat, her knee has to stay over her toe in order for her torso to remain upright. This mimics the position in the clean uh, receiving position and develops leg strength better for weightlifting. It'll transfer better for weightlifting than if she was allowing her knee to drift back like we were talking about earlier. So when she squats down again, keeping the weight in the middle of her foot, keeping her shin or her knee over her toe as long as possible out of the hole allows her to remain upright to the best uh, of her abilities. The same thing applies in the front squat. Watch out. Oh. So again, same stuff applies in the front squat to an even more degree, uh, to an even greater degree, if she's gonna keep her knee over her toe, her quadriceps are gonna do even more work because her torso is slightly more vertical than it would be in a high bar squat. And again, same, same mechanics, she's gonna bend her knee, keep her knee over her toe as long as possible to allow herself to use her quadriceps to the best uh, of their abilities in the, beginnings, the beginning portion of the squat, out of the hole through past parallel. A particularly critical cue for you is to think about bending the knees when you squat or initiating the squat if not knees first, at least with the knee and hip simultaneously. There's been so much cueing and, and reinforcement, you know, year after year after year, of people initiating the squat by breaking at the hip first and sitting back as their first movement. Right away, that's gonna put the weight towards the back of the foot, maybe in the heel, not enough pressure in the toe, not a way that you're gonna be able to utilize the quad fully. So while sometimes we'll use as an overcorrection and tell, tell the lifter knees first, if they're very, you know, dominant towards the idea of, of sitting back. I think for powerlifting, we're looking for a simultaneous unhinging of the knee and hip. Just two joints, same time, not too tricky of a concept. Everyone should be able to do it. And then for weightlifting, because there's even more priority on the uh, torso staying vertical, then the knee's first cue may even be more appropriate there. One, one thing we want to avoid too is a, a diving forward of the knee or a diving back of the hip. We don't wanna have a situation where we're exaggerating one thing first, so pushing the knees far forward initially and then causing the hip to have to shoot back at the bottom of the squat. The same, we don't wanna have a position where we stick the butt back so far in the beginning of the squat that at the bottom our knees shoot forward at the end. We want an even, as Chad said, unlocking of both joints so that they're balanced and when they hit the bottom, they're in the same position that we want them to be in. Not a diving back, then coming forward, or coming forward, then falling back. So to sum things up, you have ankles, use them. <laughs> All right, your ankle range of motion will dictate how far your knee can go forward, but allowing it to go at or near that end range of motion from the ankle, as assuming you can keep your entire foot flat on the ground and relatively equal pressure throughout the whole foot is gonna allow you to best utilize your quads in the squat, and the, use your quads in where they are best suited to be used from below parallel for the fr first few inches out of the hole. So let that knee travel forward, set up with the pressure right at the front of your ankle, right in front of your shin, allow the knee to bend, allow the knee to have some forward travel, and then try and keep that forward knee position for as long as possible as you can coming out of the hole to best utilize your quads where they are best suited to do their work. I'm Chad Wesley Smith, he's Max Ada, this is Kristen Dunsmore. Thanks for watching, hopefully you learned something. Please subscribe to the channel.